just so you know, if you hear a low bassy sound, some neighbors like two blocks over have their car stereo going, and I can just hear the low bass. Gotta love people who just love sharing their music. Anyway, today I'm going to talk about something that was asked in a comment of a recent video. I, you know, not too long ago did a series on um, uh, SQLite database stuff, very basic stuff. And someone said to me in their comments is that how they really like using plain text files, uh, but they were working on a project and they were wondering if I thought that uh, uh, using a SQLite database or some sort of database would be better than a plain text file. And my answer to that, it, it all depends. I really like doing stuff in plain text files. It's very simple, but it's going to bite you in the butt in certain cases. So my main rule of thumb, first thing I need to think about is, am I, is, am I going to be writing a script uh, that is going to update that information. So if you're just entering stuff in and the stuff that you enter doesn't change, but you're just logging stuff, in my opinion, and I'm talking about personal use here, you know, if you're, if you're doing something that other people are going to be using and there's going to be a lot of people, lots of times a database is going to be better. But if you're just logging stuff, so you're keeping track of something and you're just adding new things to the list and you're not modifying the previous stuff, uh, plain text is fine. But once you get to the point where you might want to change information that's already in there, for example, and I use this as an example a lot because it's a very common thing that you're going to create if you're going to do any type of business work, is you know an employee database. You're going to have a database of their first name, their last name, their employee number, their phone number, uh, their address, what department they work in, their title, their hire date, that sort of stuff. Well, you know what? If someone wants to change their phone number because their phone number changed, uh, writing code that modifies a, um, a plain text file, you can do it. It's just it can become... A real headache because what are you gonna you're gonna you're gonna delete out the old line and replace the old line or you're gonna try to said to replace that no that that just gets really messy and will come back to bite you so anytime if you if you're going to be updating previous information in there uh, database is probably a way to go but if you're just logging stuff and it's personal use plain text is mostly fine you know you're gonna log it search it and maybe display it somehow now as an example uh, something that I've been doing for two or three years now I created a simple little interface, and sometimes uh, it's, it's easy to create a little form that submits stuff to a text file, uh, but I have an application uh, running on my web server that I have an icon on my phone, and it's actually, on my phone, it's just a little picture of a car, and when I click on it, it lists uh, my current two cars, my wife's car and my car, and even has a log from my previous car, because I was using it then, um, and it displays a list, so it displays all the cars, I click on the car I want, and displays a list of all the stuff I've logged. And it's three columns, and it's all in rows. The first column is the date. Then it gives a description. And then if it's something that costs money, the price there. So if I got the oil change, there's the date. There's, uh, it just says oil change. Maybe I put the mileage in there. And then the next column is how much I paid. Um, so, but the way I enter stuff into that is I actually just SSH into my server and open up that file in Vim. And I have a separate text file for each of those cars and I actually liked it so much that I recently added my house to keep track of house expenses and when you go in there I, I just vim I type in the date and then each column is separated by a pipe so I type in the date a pipe description pipe price if there is one and then I do a back tick and a URL if there is one and what happens is if there is a URL in that list on my phone if I click on it it actually brings me to a URL that can be anything but in most cases it's um, documents. So, for example, I got my, let's say I changed my own oil, which I just recently started doing because a friend uh, is showing me how to do that. Um, I have a list I have here, you know, this is the date, and it says oil and filter change, and then it says the price, but then when you click on that row, it actually brings me to uh, uh, photos I took of the bottle of oil, a picture of the box of the, for the filter, and the receipts. So I have a record of what filter I used, what type of oil I used, and how much I paid. And that way in the future, when I go to change my oil myself, I can go, oh, that's the type of oil I got. I know that's the right one. I know that's the right filter, you know? Uh, and so it makes it real simple. Uh, so that, but I'm doing that myself. So I'm just searching. Actually, I don't just Vim. Since I have multiple files, you know, one for each car and one for my house and stuff like that, I actually set it up that when I SSH into my server, uh, my last three cars are Mazda's. I just type Mazda and hit enter and it actually uses FZF, which is a fuzzy finder, and it lists uh, all those files uh, for the three different cars in my house, and I can select it and it brings me into that in Vim. So all I have to do is type in Mazda, hit enter, and then if I want my newest car, I type in 2016 and hit enter, and I'm in that file, I add a new line, and if I want to, I can go back and previously and change 
previously entered stuff, which I, I usually don't. Um, but it's very simple for me to go on Vim. But if, you have, if you're creating something for other people, you in no way want them to have access to how things are formatted because they will screw up the formatting uh, just horribly, even if you try to make it as simple as possible. And that's anytime you're writing code, the hardest thing is thinking, what is the end user going to do? So, for example, this is, I'm going back 10 years, a little more than 10 years. I'm looking at, um, yeah, probably 08, 09, so about 10 years ago. Um, I was trying to help out at work. I had previously done some computer work for them. I didn't really want to be involved, but I wanted to kind of steer them in the right direction. So I created a little interface for them uh, that displays stuff that's logged. And to make it as simple as possible, I didn't want to create an interface that updates the stuff. So what I did was I created a Google uh, spreadsheet. I gave access to this lady who was in charge of it. And I set it all up, formatted it out, and I said, all you have to do is enter in the stuff here. In fact, I even created a form so it enters stuff into that database, but then my interface, you know, displays the stuff. Well, and each column was, you know, a, a different thing. All she had to do was enter in the information. Well, she decided she wanted to change the way the spreadsheet looked, and she started moving the columns around. It's like, no, you can't, you obviously can't do that, at least to me it's obvious. Uh, but she's like, she's like, oh, yeah, I moved those around, and now things, you know, aren't displaying properly. So it's like, you, you never, and... I normally wouldn't do that. Again, I was trying to not be involved because it was a headache, and I was just trying to help but not really help. Um, but, yeah, you never want to give someone access to how that information is formatted. So plain text, yeah, you, you, you're going to want to write your own interface for them to enter the information, whether it's going into a database or a plain text file. Um, and, and also, if you're creating forms where they enter stuff, you want to limit what they can type so... Let's say they have to enter their name. You don't want to give them a text field, an input field, where they can type their name. You want to give them a drop-down that lists all the employees' names, and they select their name from that. Because now, like I'm Chris, my name's Christopher, I go by both. Sometimes I write Chris, sometimes I write Christopher. Um, you know, let's say half the time I write as Chris, half the time I write as Christopher, you know, or I actually tend to misspell my name a lot. <laughs> My last name has a lot of I's in it, and when I type fast, I always miss the second to last I, almost all the time. I catch it almost all the time, but, you know, what if I type my name wrong? Now we're trying to search through the database, and it doesn't come up, so let them select, you know, from a list. If they enter the date, give them a, a calendar pop-up to select the date from. Don't let them type the date in, because people will type the date all different types of way. So you want to limit what people can do as much as possible when it comes to input. You want to want them to be able to enter the information they need to enter, but you don't want to have them type it in. Anytime you can have a, uh, a you know a, a bar where they can choose a number or uh, you know a, a drop down menu rather than typing something in or a date select anything like that where they pick things from a list rather than typing stuff in the better. Now maybe that you can they can type stuff to filter the list or search the list. But you, if you can limit them to what's in the list, always do. Um, but going back, again, rule of thumb when it comes to plain text versus database. Database is usually better, but not always worth the headache of setting up. Although if you do it a lot, like, like I do, you, you create scripts, which I do have up on GitLab to kind of automate a lot of the process. But if you're just dumping information into a log and logging the stuff, plain text is fine on small projects. Obviously, once you get to, you know, facebook size stuff, that would, that would be really stupid to do stuff as plain text there. You're going to want to do it as a database. It's going to be more efficient. And, and you're going to want to do better database stuff than I do because I am definitely not a professional when it comes to databases. I, I use the bare minimum skills just to put stuff in and update it. Um, but even if you're doing something for yourself, unless you're going to go open up Vim or some other text area and edit the text, if you're going to create an interface that not just enters stuff into the database but allows you to go in and update stuff that's already entered, you're going to want to use a database rather than a plain text file because before I started doing database stuff, again, going back like 10 years, that was probably about when I started doing a little bit of dabbling with MySQL. Um, I used to do everything plain text, and, and one, it can be very slow if the files get large. Uh, but yeah, it's like you want to update. Here's that, that employee's row. It's like how do you update that? And like the simplest way would be to grab that line, delete it out of there, make the modifications to it, and then dump it back into the file, and now it's at the bottom of the file. You can try to replace it in line, but it's just, it's, it's messy. Um, but I still use plain text for a lot of stuff. For example, I've done a few videos on my uh, water pumps. Uh, so I got two pumps, and I got ESP-826 chips that just 
send signals to my web server, HTTP requests, when the pump's on or if it's been running for a while. That's just all dumped to a plain text file. Um, again, my car thing. It, if it's just dumping stuff in there, but in any case, always make sure that you have it formatted in a way because uh, another thing is if you have it formatted well, uh, you can always convert or import it into a database if you decide to make the change later on. Of course, you can go the other way as well. You can dump your, your database into a plain text file, but usually if you've gone that far to create the database, you're not going to go back to a plain text file. Um, but if you have some sort of CSV file or TSV file where you have delimiters, uh, usually commas or tabs, I usually use the pipe symbol uh, just because it's simpler. People, when typing stuff, don't normally use the pipe symbol, but like a comma they would use in an address or something, in which case you have to write your code to, to, to take, take that into account. Uh, and even if you are using a, a symbol like the pipe symbol, you're going to want your interface to um, search that before it puts it into the plain text file. Uh, and again, most of the time I'm doing it myself, so I, I know not to do that. But if other people are, you want to replace that pipe symbol with something else. Um, you know, anything you're going to use as a delimiter, you want to make sure that that's fixed. And there's, there's code out there to help you with that. But that's my thoughts on plain text versus uh, database. Depends on your situation. If you're just doing something personal for yourself and it's very simple and you're logging stuff that you might display or search through later, most cases plain text is fine. Uh, but you're going to really bite yourself in the butt. If, <laughs> bite yourself in the butt. I don't even know. That's not really a saying. Uh, you're going to get bit in the butt. It's, it's going to nip you in the butt. That's what I'm looking for. It's going to nip you in the butt uh, if you're trying to create an interface that other people are going to use that's going to be updating information in the log if you're just using plain text file. It's going to be more of a headache than, than taking the 10 minutes to, to learn a few commands for working with some sort of SQL uh, database because you just need to know how to enter stuff and update stuff once you get going, really, and, and maybe delete uh, something. Anyway, thanks for watching. Filmsbychris.com. That's Chris the K. Link in the description of the video. As always, I thank you for watching, and I hope that you have a great day.